Welcome to the part one lecture on chapter one, the use of assessment in counseling. So in order for us to set a framework for this semester, I want to start by providing a definition of assessment. And really the most common definition of assessment is proposed by the standards for educational and psychological testing. And they define assessment as any systematic method of obtaining information from tests and other sources used to draw inferences about characteristic of people, objects, or programs. And I know this seems like a really broad definition of assessment, but in the context of social sciences, Assessment is an integral part of our individual lives because we engage in assessment related tasks every day and through our everyday actions. So everything from the grades that you get in school to how you determine if you're feeling anxious or sad about something to when you're trying a new recipe, talking with a doctor about symptoms that you're having, or asking your clients what's going on and what brings them in for a counseling session, all of these are examples of the ways that we engage in assessment in our everyday lives. And although assessment in counseling was traditionally used for academic and career planning, current assessment procedures are now used to address multiple academic, occupational, psychological, and behavioral concerns with our clients. So we can use assessment for things like personal growth, self-esteem, sexual identity, cross-cultural communication, substance misuse, suicidal ideation, family and couple relationships, and vocational choice. All of these are the broad ways that we can use assessment as counselors now today. And if we really take a step into the counseling lens, counselors and clients rely on assessment, the assessment process to engage in a lot of personal awareness exercises, to identify issues that a client is coming in with, to help make decisions, to plan for treatment or interventions, and to even evaluate the course of action of treatment. Assessment is involved in all of these aspects, and we really can't give credence to the work that we do in counseling without also understanding how assessment plays a part in that. Because in total, the assessment process can be a treatment tool by itself. By helping clients to clarify their own goals and to gain a sense of perspective and support. And really, assessment then becomes part of the rapport building process that we have with clients. Overall, there are a few common assessment categories that are used in our world today. The first of those is intelligence. Intelligence assessment refers to the evaluation of cognitive abilities such as communication, reasoning, abstract thought, learning, and problem solving. The second category or common category of assessment is ability assessment. An ability assessment refers to achievement or aptitude tests. Achievement tests are tests that are used to measure what knowledge and information we have already acquired. And aptitude assessments or aptitude tests are the ability to acquire new information. Oftentimes, ability assessments are used in educational purposes. And as you might notice, there's a little bit of overlap between abilities and intelligence assessment categories because oftentimes our assessments now fall into both of these categories or the assessment is used to assess both of these things. Another common category of assessment that we have is career. Career assessments are measures of clients' career development process. So things like career readiness, concerns, planning, and maturity, career values, and interests. All of those are under the umbrella of career assessment. And the final common category of assessment is what we call personality assessments. And these are really the examination of individual attributes, types, and traits that are related to the way that people think, 
the emotions that they feel, the actions that they engage in, and even the attitudes that they articulate. Overall, assessment categories are not fixed. They oftentimes can overlap with one another, and assessments that we have or tests that fall into one category can also fall into another category. So before we go too much further, there are a couple of key things that I want to talk to you all about to set the framework for our course, because we're going to be using some terms that are going to come up frequently, so it's going to be helpful for us to have some common definitions of them. The first of those is the term client. In the context of assessment, the client refers to an individual or a group of individuals. It can also refer to a program or a setting to be evaluated, or it can refer to a thing or a more general category of data that we are trying to monitor, such as dropout rates, divorce rates, violence, trauma, or neighborhoods. So in other words, Clients are people, they are places, and they are things. And I know that this is a really broad definition of client, but we do that on purpose because assessment is an umbrella term for the evaluation of methods that counselors use to better understand the characteristics of people, places, and things. So if assessment is so broad, our definition of client must also be broad in the assessment context. Also, a couple of key things to keep in mind is that assessment can rely on multiple methods of data collection and analysis. So we can use things like quantitative and qualitative strategies for understanding who someone is. We can look at specific score reports, we can ask them unstructured questions, and all of that is going to give us more assessment material to understand a client. And the more methods we use, the more likely we are as counselors to provide a comprehensive picture for that client of what's going on for them. Similarly, as counselors, we can use both formal and informal assessment measures to gather client data. So we can use standardized tests, rating scales, observations, interviews, classification techniques, and even client records to formally and informally assess our clients and to get the most comprehensive picture that we can of our client. You're going to hear throughout the course of our time together some terms that are used interchangeably, namely the terms assessment, appraisal, and evaluation are all interchangeable terms that we use to describe the way that we are gathering information about people, places, and things. One thing to keep in mind is that the terms assessment and test are not interchangeable things. They are different. So let's go a little bit more into that and define the word test. A test is a common component of a larger assessment process. Oftentimes, a test is a standardized process that can complement other formal and informal assessment procedures. So in other words, a test is a systematic and standardized process for how we sample and describe a behavior of interest for an individual or a group of people. The assessment is the broad term that we use to say that we are evaluating a person or an object or a place, and we're doing that through multiple methods. And one specific method that we can use is a test. So where an assessment is a broad term, a test is a very specific type of evaluation that we use under the assessment umbrella. Tests can measure past, present, and future behavior, but it can also be a reflection or feeling toward a behavior of interest. We can use assessments on a more comprehensive activity than testing by itself because assessment includes the integration and interpretation of test results and other evaluation methods, such as observation. When we talk about tests, we oftentimes have what we call self-referenced, criterion-referenced, or norm-referenced tests. And we'll go into more detail on what these things mean as 
during our time together. But just briefly, self-referenced means that you're testing someone based on their previous testing results. Criterion referenced means I'm looking at a very specific item or question that was asked of you and I'm going to see how your response on that specific item or cr criterion changes over time. And we also have norm referenced data. And norm referenced data means how do you compare on your test results right now to other people who are like you in some way whether that be on your sex assigned at birth, your occupation, or even your age. Another term that you're gonna hear frequently in the course of our time together is measurement. And measurement refers to the process of determining the amount or quantity of something. Oftentimes, measurement is expressed on various scales based on particular rules that we have for that information. So in the context of social sciences, scales of measurement are either nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio. Ratio, And we'll talk more about what these terms mean in chapter five, but what I want you to know about measurement now is that it relates to providing data to meet some criteria. So tests are administered to assess the degree to which a criterion is met. So things like length, time, mass, temperature, all of these are examples of measurement that we use to assess the degree to which someone meets a specific diagnosis or specific outcome. And each one of these categories is a criterion that goes towards that final understanding. We also have the term variable. And variables are labels of measurement that are assigned through the assessment process. So a variable oftentimes refers to a construct or a concept of interest that can take on more than one value depending on the person who's defining it. We talk about variables in different contexts, but there are a couple of key themes with variables. One of those is that our variables can be what we consider to be categorical. And when a variable is categorical, we say that we can group things together by their type. So good examples of categorical variables are things like our gender, ethnicity, sports team, and hair color. You can group these things together by type, but not one is better than the other in any sort of way. We can also have a continuous variable. And a continuous variable is where they are measured on a continuum. So things such as age, rank, or test scores. All of these things can be ranked against one another or placed on a continuum. We also have what's called independent variables where things are pre-existing and can be manipulated to influence an outcome. Sometimes we use the term predictor variable to describe an independent variable. It's the thing that we have control over in our experiments or in an assessment. We also have dependent variables and these dependent variables are constructs that are affected by our independent variables. Other times you might see the words outcome or response variables and those are synonymous terms for our dependent variable. And again, the dependent variable is the thing that we are measuring in response to changes in our independent variable. And we also have extraneous variables, which can sometimes be called a confounding variable. And these are noise variables that influence our independent variables, but are unrelated to the assessment process. So in the context of assessment, this can be things like the environment of a testing session, whether or not there were distractions going on, all of those can be related to the assessment process, but they're not necessarily things that we are interested in measuring, but they influence our results regardless. And the final term that I want to define for y'all is psychometrics. In the context of assessment, psychometrics is the study of measurement technique and theory. And that is the focus of the first four weeks of our time together, psychometrics understanding what assessment is, how we do assessment, and the theories behind it. 
in the context of assessment, we have purposes or reasons why we engage in assessment. And oftentimes, assessment has advantages for the counseling process in that it provides pertinent data for us to understand and address individual and programmatic concerns. Assessment can also be the process of being assessed therapeutically in a meaningful way so that clients can gain self-awareness. Also, assessment can be the process of ongoing monitoring of attitudes, of knowledge, of skills, and things that help us to ongoingly assess our clients. And it's important to convey the purpose of assessment with our clients throughout the assessment process because assessment should be a part of the learning process for clients and not something that is added on to a counseling session. Rather, assessment can be a problem-solving process, something that we oftentimes will describe through five different steps of assessment. So we use assessment to problem solve what's going on for our client, and that problem solving process can be broken down into different stages. The first of those is the problem orientation, which refers to the client understanding and accepting that there is a problem to be solved. For example, we might use an alcohol screening inventory to help a client and the counselor identify an area of focus for a client in regards to their alcohol use. That is using assessment to orient both ourselves as counselors and our clients to the problem that they're coming into. We can also use assessment in problem identification, which involves the client and counselor identifying the components of the problem in as much detail as possible. So for example, we might provide a client with a diagnosis to classify a set of concerns or symptoms that they're experiencing, which can then help us narrow down treatment options. So problem identification is using assessment to most narrow down what is going on. We can also use assessment to generate alternatives for what a client is experiencing. In terms specifically of being able to explore what options they have for problem resolution, identifying their strengths during each stage of counseling. So for example, we might ask our clients what they've done before in the past to work on their recovery and what they felt like didn't work and did work. And that will help us to generate alternatives of where to go from here. We can also use assessment in decision making. And that refers to the client considering options for problem solving and considering the, the consequences of each option that they generate. So for example, this can be letting the client be part of intervention planning by telling you what they think will work and not work in their daily lives because they're the expert in their own lives and you're there to facilitate whatever goals they've established. We can also use assessment as verification. And this involves the client and the counselor discussing how the client will know when a particular problem is resolved. So this can be things like asking the miracle question and using outcome questionnaires to assess post-treatment progress. It's really helping us to discuss when a client will have achieved their final goal and how they will know. And there are several limitations to what tests and other assessment procedures can provide. Specifically, assessment procedures highlight only one sample of data at a particular time. Also, assessments can only measure common traits and do not account for unique constructs within a particular individual. Also, assessments are not culture-free. They are not perfect. In fact, most assessments are using some sort of culture in the interpretation of the results, and we have to take that into account when using assessments and counseling. Moreover, assessment results can be used inappropriately, and oftentimes they are used inappropriately. So some of the ways that tests are not useful are the misuse of tests. So when tests are misused, 
they are misused in a way that decision in decision making and applied to individuals inappropriately. Some of those concerns can be the misuse of assessments with minority groups. So it's important to keep in mind that a lot of assessments are normed on populations. And historically, assessments were normed on white individuals in European countries or countries of European descent like the United States. And sometimes people can misuse assessments when they use them with minority groups for whom they were not normed or developed and then misuse them. So say that if you are a person of color and you have a score that is less than what would be expected of your age, saying that it's due to you being a minority, that's a misuse of an assessment. Assessments can also be misused if they're used to label or stereotype a person based on their test results. So saying based on your test results, I'm going to diagnose you with these things and that's it just label you and stereotype you and not provide context to what that means. Tests can also be misused if someone is disproportionately relying on a test in high stakes decision making. So things like selections for college or employment. In some of these situations, there's too much emphasis that's placed on the test results, oftentimes because people feel like they are so robust and scientific in nature. Other times, tests can be misused when they disregard information that conflicts with someone's individual personal beliefs or desires. All of these are examples of the ways that assessment tests can be misused and things to keep in mind as effective clinicians in wanting to move away from that. So that's going to wrap up the first part of our lecture on Chapter 1. You can join me in the next lecture for the second half of Chapter 1.